Hi, I wanted to create a beginner video so that people weren't so intimidated by what Pyo is. There's a lot of yoga moves and it goes really quickly. So I thought if I would just break it down and show you in a fairly condensed video all of the moves that you're going to see in Pyo, it might give you just a little more confidence to try it out. So I want to start with our warm up. Warm up is super easy to catch on to. It repeats. We do the same moves each time. So our first move, arms are out to the side and we have our shoulders down and back. Our core is nice and tight. And we circle in and around two times in and around. And then we take our right arm and we reach it up side bend and just get a nice stretch at that side. And we just pulse it two times. And our arms go right back out, two arm circles in and around. And then the left arm goes up into a side bend. Ah, so good. And it's two pulses. The next move, we tighten our core. We sit in the chair, sit, and then we lunge our right leg back and we pull. And then we sit, lunge our left leg back and pull and repeat. Our third move is called a pio cross. Now in this move, we take a big step over to our right, we round our back, we open our chest, we round our back, and then we step together. It's almost like a standing cat-cow. So if we were going to do a cat and a cow, which is another move, our hands would be under our shoulders, our knees would be under our hips, and we would arch our back up and release. So when we arch it up, that's like the cat. And when we release, that's the cow. So in that pio cross, it's that similar motion. It's a round, open, round, together. And then to the other side. And what's so nice about that is that it starts really warming up your spine. If you think of it in that way of a standing cat cow. And then our last move, we fan it up and inhale, way forward fold, half lift, and a half lift, all a half lift is, is our back is coming parallel to the ground. Take it back down, and then we bend our right knee, we bend our left knee, we bend both sitting in a ball, and then we roll it up. Whoop. Super simple to catch on to, and we repeat that over and over again. Let's talk warriors. All right, so a warrior is a very common yoga pose. There's warrior ones, twos, and threes. There's reverse warriors. And the starting point for all of them is our feet. Now, stand with your right foot pointing at your right wall and your left foot your left heel is going to intersect your right arch. So now they are perpendicular. And what I want you to do is just step that left foot forward, spread those legs out, keeping that same foot position. So now my left heel would intersect my right arch, bend into that front leg a little bit, keeping my knee over my ankle. Don't want it to go past our toes. So this is our general leg setup for a heck of a lot of moves in Pyo. Warrior ones are when our shoulders are squared up to the front of the room, shoulders and kind of trying to get those hips squared up as well. And in Pyo, a lot of the time, a warrior one, we're going to push through a warrior one, windmill back into a reverse warrior. Let's try that again. So square up your shoulders, push through and then windmill the right arm back first followed by the left and this is what a reverse warrior is a warrior two is when our feet stay in this exact same position so the right foot is pointing at your right wall your left foot is pointing forward that left heel is intersecting your right arch and now what we're going to do is just reach right arm toward your back, left arm toward your front, and you're reaching through your fingertips, activating those shoulder muscles. I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So 
Notice my arms aren't just, right now, they're just kind of hanging out like accessories. We're gonna really actually activate everything. Can you see how there's some definition now when it, you're really reaching through? That activates your shoulder muscles, the deltoids. So we reach through, and a lot of times in Pio, what our movement is going to be will be moving through it. So we're here in our Warrior Two, and we're gonna come up, and we're gonna go right back down. Come up, and right back down. And sometimes we even have a little bit more flavor where it might be a double pulse and stand. Double pulse and stand. All right, so that's our Warrior Two. A Warrior Three is when we're trying to form more of a T with our body. Now, I don't have a ton of room, so when I teach, I don't have my arms straight out in front of me. There are variations that you can do with a warrior three. You can have your arms straight out, trying to square up that hip to the ground. So instead of having what we might call an open hip, so that's an open hip, it's kind of pointing toward that wall. You want your hip to be squared up looking at the ground. And additionally, you want your heel, this is a really good way to think about it, you want your heel to be looking right at the ceiling. So we're squaring up that hip, the heel's looking at the ceiling. Now you can have your arms straight out, like you're a big T. You can have your hands more at heart center or you can even fly those arms. A lot of times you'll notice when I'm teaching, I fly them just because I don't have a ton of space and that's what fits for my area that I'm teaching it. But really, however you're doing it, the main thing to be thinking about is really keeping your hips squared up to the ground. That heel is looking at the ceiling and maybe your warrior three is right here. There's no reason that you need to try to get your body parallel to the ground, okay? You might see that I have a deeper expression of a lot of these moves. You don't need to do that. Do what feels comfortable for your body, especially when you're learning this. Listen to how your body's feeling. The main things though, just pay attention to your knees. Make sure that when you're in a warrior, your knee isn't past your toes, okay? Just we're keeping knee over ankle. And so if you notice that it's past your toes, what that means is you need to step back a little more, get a wider stance so that that knee is back further. Heel intersects arch, step it straight back, okay? Square up that, your shoulders to the front. We might push through and reverse our warrior. Let's do that one more time. Push and reverse. Now let's go into a moving warrior two, down, down and lift. Nice, reaching through those fingertips. Beautiful. Let's learn triangles and right angles. They have the same foot placement as warrior ones and twos. So my heel would intersect my arch. A triangle is when we are forming a triangle with our legs. You're keeping this knee soft. You'll notice it's not a perfect it's not perfectly straight. <laughs> I keep that knee soft because our knees are really important and we don't want to hyperextend them, right? So that knee is soft and we're stacking shoulder on shoulder and we're just kind of tick-tocking forward. So we're here, let's say that we're in warrior two, okay? We can straighten that front leg, tick-tock our body forward, and now we're in a triangle. A right angle is when we bend this front leg into a 90 degree, okay? And we're stacking shoulder on shoulder, forming a straight line with our arms, opening up through the chest. And that is our right angle. So to go from a right angle to a triangle, all we would do is straighten that front leg and now we're in a triangle. A lot of times in Pio, we might go from here into a low runner's lunge. So a low runner's lunge is when we have both feet pointing forward, nice wide base. And again, the reason for this is because I want my knee to stay over my ankle. If my back foot's in too far, my knee might be going past my toes. And I don't wanna do that because that's not healthy for my knee. So 
nice wide apart and this is now a low runner's lunge. You'll notice that we oftentimes might move through it. And by the way, you don't ever have to move through things in Pio. If you would rather just hold, that's great. But we might move through it. And in that movement, you're gonna notice it just stretches out that hip flexor a little bit of whichever leg is back. And as you come up, it stretches out the back of the leg of whichever leg is forward. So you'll move through it just a little bit down and up. There is a move called a reverse low runner's lunge. So in that, we're in our low runner's lunge. Whichever hand is opposite of the foot forward, that one's going to plant. And you're going to twist and open up into a reverse. So really, this is just being able to open up through the chest. You're going to feel a little stretch in your chest muscles, maybe even that left bicep a little bit, and you're looking up at your hand. Beautiful. All right. Another move that you're going to see quite often is called a three-point tip. And then you have the option to open up into a half moon. So we're, we're on that, that left leg right now. Our right leg's in the air. And our hands are giving us the additional two points. So we have one, two, three, so we have a lot of balance here. Then a lot of the time in Pio, the next move will be a half moon. So in a half moon, now we're just taking one of those hands off the mat. We're stacking shoulder on shoulder, forming a straight line with those arms, tightening our core, flexing that back foot, and it's just a very strong pose. And then hand might come down, and then we might step it back to go into whatever next move we have. Another move. It's called a connector to a side atlas. In that move, there's <laughs> there are times when our knees do go past our toes, and this is one of them. So in a connector, we just kind of come down into a little ball, and then we stand up in a side atlas is this beautiful, see how I'm reaching to my side? And if we do it on the other side, our left foot would be behind our right. We take it down, kind of connect at the ankles, stand it up and reach into a side atlas. Just a beautiful curvature of your body. It feels so good getting that stretch up the side. Another move that you're going to see a lot of is called flight. Flight shows up certainly in full body fusion and flow. Flight is one where both feet are pointing forward, but they're on different tracks. So have a nice wide base that gives you a lot more balance. So right foot is forward, left foot is back. Nice wide amount of space between them. And in flight, we keep our knee over our ankle. Our body comes forward. Our arms reach. Now notice, again, my arms aren't just kind of hanging out. My arms are activated. They're reaching through the fingertips. All of those muscles, the triceps, the delts, everything is working. And you'll notice we come up sometimes, we go right back down into flight. Sometimes we circle and open up our chest and then come back into flight. Lots and lots of different variations there. Let's talk about down dogs. Okay, a down dog is when we have equal amounts of weight on our hands and our feet, and we're essentially forming a V. Now, relax your head and neck between your biceps. Try to get your heels just a little closer to the mat. In Pio, we have lots of variations of down dogs. One is called a crouching down dog. So we're in a down dog, and what we're gonna do is crouch. So we're gonna bend our knees, and then we're gonna straighten them and get our heels closer to the mat. Let's do it again. So we crouch two, three, four, and straighten. Two, three, four. One more. Crouch two, three, four, and straighten. Two, three, four. We also have single leg down dogs. So 
Let's take our right leg up, and we're just right now reaching through those toes, making that leg nice and long. Trying to get our left heel a little closer to the mat, relaxing our head and neck between our biceps. Now let's bend that right leg, opening up the hip so the hip is kind of facing your right wall. And a lot of times we'll even add a little bit of a pulse, a little bit of a glute squeeze here. Nice. Let's take our right foot back down to our mat. Let's take our left leg up into a single leg down dog. So again, reaching through those toes, making that leg long. Relax your head and neck between your biceps. Right heel, get it a little closer to your mat. Then let's bend that leg, flex that foot, open up your hip to that left wall, and then just a little glute squeeze. Yes, so good. Let's step it all the way through into a low runner's lunge. And you'll notice I kind of wiggled my back foot to just get a little bit further of a base so that my knee is over my ankle, not past my toes. So knee is over ankle, and we can even move through it. We can press a little and straighten, press and extend, just kind of moving through. Let's go into a pyramid. So in a pyramid, we're going to take our right foot that's in the back, we're going to step it into a 45 degree angle. Our left foot is going to still point forward. We're going to square up our hips and our shoulders. And now you'll notice our legs are basically forming a triangle or a pyramid. And in Pio, there's lots of variations of pyramids. You can move through and you get to choose however you want to do it. Your hand might be wanting to rest on your quadricep, not on your knee. You don't want to put pressure on your knee, but maybe on your quadricep and just sort of move through it. Feel the stretch in your left hamstring right now. That left foot is forward, that right foot's at a 45. Holy cow, what a great stretch in that hamstring. Another option, you could put your hands on the ground. Some people really like to put their hands on their lower back and you can move through it or not. Maybe just right here is where you want to hold. Play around with it and see what feels best for you. Let's take it back down into a down dog. Crouching. Let's crouch one more time. Crouch two, three, four, and up. Get those heels a little closer. Beautiful. Now, in heat building, we go from a crouching down dog to where we lunge our right foot to our right hand uh-huh, and then we reverse it. We open up our chest. So it's really just bringing that arm up, stacking shoulder on shoulder, forming a straight line, and then we move through it. Heat building really gets its name from what it does to your body. You will build so much heat. You get really, really warm during heat building. So all the other stuff, you just feel really limber and ready to do. And then that hand will come down, we'll step it back and switch. So now the left foot lunges to your left hand, left arm opens up, stack shoulder on shoulder, and move through it. Ah, so good. Left hand comes down. Let's step our right leg up. All right, let's talk more about heat building. Heat building is the section where sun salutations live. In a sun salutation, we're gonna be near the front of our mat, shoulders down and back, Core is in nice and tight. We're going to fan it up and inhale. Forward fold. Half lift, so just back parallel to your ground. And then plant your hands and step back into a plank. Nice, strong plank. Now let's talk about planks. Core is tight. Press through your heels. Activate all the muscles in the backs of your legs and in your quadriceps even. We are just a really strong straight board. Instead of just kind of being saggy, we're not down here. Our hips are lifted. Everything is strong. Now for a chaturanga, chaturanga, the first time I did Pio and the instructor said, okay, chaturanga. And I was like, what are you talking about? I had no idea. I had never even heard of that word. A chaturanga essentially is going from high plank to low plank, okay? So in that move, we're in a nice strong plank. We shift our body forward just a little. We lower 
down. Now, as we lower, elbows point behind you. This is where I see people have mistakes happen and then they get frustrated because what they're trying to do is impossible. Okay, so elbows do not poke out to the side. Elbows are tight to your body, pointing behind you. Then we push forward into an up dog. And you might have noticed, so if we're in our plank, and I lowered down and my toes right now are on the pads. Now I'm gonna, I put the tops of my feet on the, on the mat to go into my up dog. Then I curl my toes under to go down dog. And then we step it in right and left. Let's do that again. Fan it up and inhale, forward fold, half lift. Plant your hands on the mat, step back to a nice strong plank, tighten your core, press through the heels, shift your body forward a little, lower it down, up dog, down dog, and then step it in. Let's talk about modifications. Let's do a modification together. Let's fan it up and inhale, forward fold, half lift, plant your hands, step back, Let's go to our knees, lower down, up dog, just still kind of press into it, but we're resting our legs on the ground, and then press into your down dog, and step in right and left. Now, I noticed that as I did more chaturangas, I became stronger and stronger, and more and more able to do push-ups. Let's talk about that for a second. So when we are going to chaturanga, we lower it down. And instead of having to actually push ourselves all the way back up, we just push ourselves forward into that up dog. But in that motion, we're still working our arms, right? We're lowering and then still kind of pushing into that up dog. The more chaturangas that I did, the more and more comfortable I got with doing them, and the more easily I was able to do tricep push-ups. So let's talk about tricep push-ups. You are going to notice <laughs> that we have a lot of them in Pio. In full body fusion, we always start with three sets of tricep push-ups. At the back of our mat, shoulders are down and back, core is in nice and tight. What we do is we roll it down and we walk it out to a plank one, two, three. From here, we have three tricep push-ups. Now, elbows skim your ribs, elbows point behind you, tighten your core, and then we push into a down dog. And with straight legs, we walk it back to our toes, we roll it up, we fan our arms up with a squat. And it goes really quickly. <laughs> Please don't let it overwhelm you. You will catch on. We do it a total of six times every time you do pile. So let's try it again. So we roll it down. We walk it out to plank. One, two, three. Now, if those tricep push-ups are just not happening for you, we have options. First option, go to our knees. So from here, we are pressing down and up. Elbows still tight to the body, pointing behind you, tightening that core. So we do three of them, plant our toes, press into that down dog and walk it back. Roll it up, fan the arms up, squat. Let's do it again. Next modification option. We roll it down, we walk it out. Maybe push-ups aren't happening at all. Guess what? Hold plank. Then down dog, let's walk it back. Roll it up, big squat at the top, bam. And in between option is to roll it down, walk it out, and maybe you just do one push up. Maybe you just do two. Whatever it is, you're getting stronger. Don't berate yourself. Do what you can do until you can do more. All right, woo. So that's our full body fusion. That's how it always starts. So heat building always starts with those sun salutations. Full body fusion always starts with the pyo push-ups. So we just learned a bunch of moves. Let's put a couple of them together. 
starting with child's pose, which we actually haven't talked about. A child's pose is just a beautiful move. We don't do it a ton in patio, although you always, always, always have the option to just take a minute, take a break, go down to your mat into a child's pose, and then join us when you feel like you can. So in a child's pose, our knees are nice and wide, toes are together, and our arms are reaching in front of us, and forehead is down toward the mat. So one of our beautiful, beautiful full body fusions includes a child's pose that then goes into what we call a pyobra. So in that move, we're in a child's pose, and then we push through into a pyobra. Kind of a funny little term here, but essentially, child's pose, push through, just open up your chest, feel that stretch in your core. The next move then, we plant our foot as if we're gonna go into a plank. We plant our left foot, we pull our right knee to the right elbow, and then we take it up into a single leg down dog. Let's do that again, we pull it in, and then take it right up to a single leg down dog. Then we lunge it through, take your time, press into a warrior three. And then we go into a three point tip, open up that left arm into a half moon. And if that half moon is just seeming impossible, we just hold it into that three point tip. And again, a few pointers for that half moon is just to flex that back foot, tighten your core, and open up that arm. And of course, you're gonna wiggle, you're gonna wobble. All of that is good. <laughs> it's to be expected. Be gentle with yourself, okay? I've been doing this for six years, a lot. <laughs> I still wiggle, wobble, fall down. It's okay, it's all welcome. And actually, all of those wiggles and wobbles and everything strengthened your ankles, your feet. So all of it is really a benefit. There's no need for judgment. Leave the judgment off the mat, okay? So we're starting at the top of our mat. Shoulders are down and back. Core is in nice and tight. Arms out to your side. Start with two arm circles, in and around. Here we go. In and around, one more time. In and around, right arm reaches up, side bend. So we're just getting a great stretch up that right side of your body. Great, two arm circles, in and around. One more, and then the left arm reaches up, side bend. Ah, so pretty. We're gonna sit in a chair, tighten your core, right leg lunges back and pull. Great, step it together, sit in a chair, left leg lunges back and pull. Boom, chair, so tighten that core, right leg lunges back, pull, chair left. One more time. We're gonna go into that pio cross, big step to your right, round, open, round, round, open, round, together. Think of it like a standing cat cow, warming up your spine, together. Two more, round, open, round, together. Last one, yes, so good. Center of your mat, let's fan it up and inhale. Forward fold, half lift, back to your toes, then just your right, now just your left. Then both sit in a ball, and then roll it up. Let's move on to heat building. So we're gonna fan it up and inhale. Forward fold, half lift. Plant your hands, step back to plank. Let's chaturanga, up dog, down dog. And then let's step it in, right and left. Nice, let's move it back to the back of our mat. Let's do a pio push-up. Shoulders down the back, core is nice and tight. Roll it down, walk it out. Three tricep push-ups, or maybe you're holding a plank, or maybe you're on your knees, maybe you're just doing one. With straight legs, let's walk it back and roll it up. Nice, let's go to our child's pose. So knees are nice and wide. Toes are together, arms are reaching out in front. We're gonna go into our pyobra. So push forward in that pyobra. Come right back to child's. Press forward into pyobra. Plant your left foot down into plank. Right knee pulls to right elbow. Right leg reaches up, single leg down dog. Pull it in. 
Right leg reaches up. Right foot lunges through. We're going to go into that warrior three. Press into that. If balance is tough, go into that three-point tip because it's our next move anyway. Go into it. Left arm opens up. Half moon hold. Let's connect to a side atlas. Connect. Side atlas. Woo! So good. Let's take our left foot forward. We're going to go into warriors. Practice that because we just learned all of these moves in such a short amount of time. Square up your shoulders. We're going to push through. So making sure that our knee is over our ankles. Push through. Let's reverse our warrior. Windmill it back. Reverse. Let's do one more. Push and reverse. Let's go into warrior two. Reaching through and then come on up. Reach through and come up. Let's sweep front back circle. Front foot, back foot. Circle it around. Now notice both feet are pointing out. All right, they're like at 45 degrees pointing that way. Let's do it again. Front foot, back, circle. And then let's go into a right angle. So fix your feet so your right foot is pointing to the right, left foot is pointing forward. That warrior feet, that's what we use for our right angle and triangle. So we fixed our feet. We're bending that knee into a 90. Left hand reaches to your left foot, right arm up, opening up through the chest. And then let's straighten that front leg into a triangle. Fantastic. From here, let's go into a low runner's lunge. So both feet are pointing forward. Right leg is way behind your left so that you have ample room, keeping that knee over your ankle, moving through it if you would like. Let's reverse it. So right hand plants down, left arm opens up. Let's take that into a down dog, left leg up. So hands go down, single leg down dog. So good. Let's flex that back foot, bend that knee, open up that hip, get your right heel a little closer to your mat. Relax your head and neck between your biceps. Let's step it through and go into a pyramid. Right foot steps in at a 45. We can hold it here. We can be up here. We can have our hands behind our back. We can move through it or not. Ah, oh, isn't that fantastic? So many moves that you just learned that you will see over and over and over again in Pio. And now at least you've kind of seen them, you've kind of felt them. Give Pio a chance, do it a few times. Keep showing up to your mat, leave the judgment off the mat. Just showing up makes you a badass. Thanks for being here. Bye guys.